Good morning. So the word for today is obsequious, which means to be obedient or attentive to an excessive degree. So let's see what the word of God has to say about being obsequious. So let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for today and we thank you for your word. Um, thank you so much that you speak to us, that you're alive and powerful and your word is sharper than a two-edged sword and you divide all of the things that we need to know and what we don't need to know. Lord, continue to show us, grow us, help us to mature in who you have called us to be. And we lift up this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Obsequious. Obsequious. So our first scripture is from Proverbs 22, 7. Uh, the New King James Version reads, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So the borrower becomes obsequious to the lender, which means they become the lender's slave, which mean, in the New American Standard Version. In the Message Version, it says, um, they put themselves under their power. So when you have to borrow from somebody, and not that you should never borrow from somebody because, you know, it happens that you would have credit or something that you would need to take out a loan on a car or a home or something like that. But you want to make sure that whatever you're borrowing, you're able to repay. So if you can't, you become obsequious to the person that you're owing to, right? Well, some continued notes in that under Proverbs 22, 7 in my uh, life application Bible. It talks about um, being dependent. Once you, once you take out that loan, once you're indebted to somebody, you're dependent upon them. You have an obligation to them. So then it causes and affects your life. You have a loss of confidence in what you can and cannot do because you have this outstanding debt with this person. And then you're humbled because it's not about you anymore. It's about what that person wants as opposed to what you want or what God would want for you. So you need to make sure when you take out a loan or when you become a borrower to someone, become obsequious to them, that it's something that's in line with what God's best is for you. So the notes say, does this mean we should never borrow? No, but it warns us never to take on the loan without carefully examining our ability to repay it. So do we have the ability to repay the loan? Do we have the ability to not become obsequious in this situation? So a loan we can handle is enabling. A loan we can't handle is enslaving. And the, borrow, the borrower must realize that until the loan is repaid, he or she is a servant to the individual or institution that made it. So nobody wants to be in that situation. It's a, it, it stinks. That's a situation that we don't want to be in. So God's word is just showing us that we need to try to do everything in our power to not be in that situation. So another verse in regard to obsequiousness would be in... Colossians 3.12. So Colossians 3.12 says, um, in the New King James Version, uh, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Humility, meekness, long-suffering. Obsequious. Obsequiousness. Those are the words that we're looking at. So we also need to see how it says to put on these things. We have to put them on because it's not a normal thing for us to be. be it is normal for us to be uh, harsh and unkind and self-centered and all about us and impatient and angry. Those are normal, normal and natural for us as human beings. In order to be supernatural, we would have to take on the power of God to help us and put on these characteristics because these characteristics are not common for us they are not normal for us we have to put them on and how do we put them on we have to consistently consciously decide to submit consistently consciously decide to put on humility to put on meekness to put on long suffering to be obsequious unto the lord okay so different translations give us different words, give us a different insight. The Wycliffe translation says mercy or benignity, temperance or patience. Um, the, we the Weymouth New Testament gives lowliness of mind. The Douay-Rheims Catholic Bible says modesty. 
Uh, the New Living Translation gives gentleness. The New International Reader's Version gives don't be proud. I thought that was the easiest one to understand. Pride is, I got this. It's all about me. I don't care what you want to do. I, I know what I want to do. And my way is more important than whatever you want or think. And that's pride. Well, if you're feeling that way, that's the opposite of obsequiousness. We want to be hum humble. We want to be meek. We want to be long-suffering. In order to do that, good morning, Francis. Glad to see you. In order to do that, we have to put on the characteristics of God. So what does it say to us in regard to that? Those are, again, the consistent, conscious decisions to submit. Um, 312. Okay, so then our last verse is James 4.10. And in James 4.10, it says, Good morning, Francis. Glad to see you. In James 4.10, it says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. He will lift you up. Okay, well, why, why is that important? Well, if I lift myself up, I can very easily fall. If, I, if it's all about me, my way, my thoughts, my desires, my plan, my purpose, me, then pride comes before fall. It's not going to last long, right? So if I allow myself to be humbled, then God lifts me up. And God can't lift me up if I'm already lifting myself up. And I know you know these people, and maybe you are this person, where you're constantly all about you. It's constantly about you, your thoughts, what's going on in your life. It has nothing to do with anybody else. You don't take the time to listen to what anybody else has to say. It's all about you. Well, then it's all about you. God can't lift you up if you're too busy lifting yourself up, right? So... Some other translations, okay, so humble would be the word obsequiousness. So obsequ obsequ obsequious, your obsequious yourself to the, in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself. Yes and amen. Thank you, Francis. So the other version state, the basic Bible English version states, make yourself low. So the opposite of making yourself low would to raise yourself up. And we're not talking about having a bad self-image and putting yourself down and not thinking of yourself, uh, making yourself depressed and feeling worthless. That's, that's not what we're saying. Because God created you in his image and we are perfectly and wonderfully made. So therefore we can't think of ourselves as less than what God has created us to be. But again, it's a very fine balance of it's not all about you, it's all about God, right? So the message version says, get down on your knees. I love that. Get down on your knees. What does it mean to humble yourself? What does it mean to ob obsequious yourself? Get down on your knees. It's not about you lifting yourself up, but it's about you coming down before God and understanding that he is God and you are not. Uh, the New Century Version says, don't be too proud in the Lord's presence. When we're in the Lord's presence, we need to understand that it is about him. It is about worshiping him. It is about glorifying him. It is about praising him. It is about his purpose, his plan, his direction for us. It is not about us coming to him and demanding or expecting or being so about our plan and purpose that we neglect to see God's plan and purpose in our life. Um, the New International Version, the New International Reader's Version says, bow down to the Lord. And the Tyndale Bible says, cast down yourself. Now, nobody, good morning, Mar Maria, glad to see you. Nobody is saying, again, that you should be putting yourself as a doormat and that you should be looking down at yourself as being worthless. Nobody is saying that, but it is saying to cast down yourself. If you cast down yourself, if you understand that it is not all about me and it is all about God and God has the primary focus in my life, don't worry about it because God's got you. God will lift you up. God will see you through. God will give you the purpose, the plan, the direction that you need in any and every situation. If we set ourselves aside and put him as the primary focus, that's the mindset. That's how we cast down ourselves. It's not about us and our plan and our purpose, but God's. 
So my summary of the word obsequious. God's word instructs us not to serve another by borrowing, not becoming obsequious to another person, right? Good morning, Maria. Glad to see you, hon. But to put on humility, obsequiousness toward God for him to lift us up. We have to put on humility. We, it is not a natural thing. We do not naturally want to be humble to somebody else or to God. We do not want to humble ourselves before God because we want to be in control. To humble ourselves before God is to say, I lay my life at your feet. I understand it's not about me. It's all about you. So he can then lift us up. If we're so busy lifting ourselves up, there's nowhere for us to go but down, right? So God is saying, let me lift you up. Let me take care of you. Let me get this for you. So my, sorry, my um, application in my life for this verse or this word obsequious is, thank you, Lord, for the reminder. It's not about me, but it's all about you. God wants us to be obsequious to him, attentive to to an obedient or attentive to an excessive degree. God wants us to be obsequious to him, so therefore he can lift us up. So I hope that touches you. Uh, Francis mentioned, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Yes and amen. So I hope this touches you. I hope this gives you a, a different insight. I hope it encourages you to get into the word for yourself because um, God has an amazing plan and purpose for you. And it requires you spending time in a relationship with him. So thank you so much for your time. God bless. Thanks so much for the love, Francis. Talk to you later.